Hi, uh, my name is Sokintari Sve, and I am an author and a teacher. Um, I was invited by Lorraine to come be a speaker at the Bronx Book Fair. I, uh, we've been building community, and she is sort of an honorary Cambodian. And um, I, I was surprised by the offer. I thought it was a real honor to do it and to come home to the Bronx after having left, and my family has left, even though I was basically raised here and I came as a refugee, and to share my work for the first time with, I, with what I consider my home and my, my, a large part of my identity. Oh, I love this. Nobody ever really asks me about this anymore. Uh, I, we resettled on White Plains Road in Bronx Park East uh, in sort of the Van Nest area, and I went to school in Pelham Parkway and Park Chester, and then we moved to West Farms, uh, to Boston Road East Tremont, and I was told if you move west, you're going to the bad area, but if you go east, where all the white people are, like, you know, uh, you know, all the houses and the Italians are, then you're moving the right way. Uh, I didn't care. We, I, I, all I knew was I had my own bedroom for the first time. I, I don't know. I, I don't, the Bronx feels like this, like, this other part of my, this other time in my life. It feels very far away. At the same time, it's so alive in my memories and it's in everything that I do. And when I identify myself, I don't call myself Cambodian American, I think, uh, or, or Asian American, which I think is a problematic term because it's supposed to cover so many countries in the world. And of, often, uh, as a Southeast Asian refugee, we get overlooked for, you know, for East Asians. So uh, I think of myself as a Cambodian New Yorker or a Cambodian from the Bronx. That's how I identify myself. You know, you wear the big hoop earrings, you always dress sexy and like show off your body, <laughs> you know? And the women are strong and they are brown and they are black, you know? Like for me, like that is, that's what I identify with. And you speak, and you speak your mind and you speak your piece and so you be real about it. You know, none, none of that, none of the BS, you know? So for me, that's, that's what I think of when I think of the Bronx. There's, there's all this love, but there's like so much laughter too. There's unabashed laughter. When I go to certain circles that are of lighter complexions, it tends to be very prim and proper and you know, very careful and uh, curated. But I, I feel like the moment, the moment I'm in the Bronx, I feel I can really be myself. Wow, that's a really deep question. I feel like it should be answered in stages. But uh, when I came, I was a year old. I was born in a Thai refugee camp, uh, and my parents had just fled through the jungles across the border, where uh, thousands of other refugees had also fled. And um, by the time we came, I hadn't. Really, I I didn't experience it directly. Uh, I experienced the aftermath of my parents being in like a distress, post-traumatic stress disorder, and uh, survival mode. And so my household was very quiet. When, when we came over here, we, you know, we, we had nothing. They gave us $5 and we were done. And that was it, go find a job. You know, you can't speak English, but you're supposed to survive somehow. And they put us, uh, they put all the Cambodians in, in like poverty stricken areas and buildings that had rat and roach infestations. And you know, things were not fixed. The landlords didn't like us. You know, I, it was to be a complete stranger and to come here not for opportunity, but because like if you didn't come here, you were gonna you would be dead, you know. So to come here under those conditions, and, uh, it makes for like a, a story of resilience, I guess. Um, and as far as like this, how the Bronx came into all my writing, into my identity, and my being, I think just I didn't realize that until until I left the Bronx. You know how that is, right? When you leave home, that's when you realize like how how everything has affected you. And I think it's when I realized. For example, West Farms was in, uh, well, up until a few years ago before it was rezoned, it was in the poorest congressional district in the U.S. with a poverty rate of 38 percent. I mean, that's higher, it's, yeah, that's higher than any other, uh, any other congressional district. Anyway, they, they've changed, they've rezoned it now to include like Rye, New York, and like other uh, more well-off parts. But um, I think about how I could have, the, the different life I could have led if I didn't go to high school. You know, I could have been, I could have been pregnant at 15. I could have been married off <laughs> in an arranged marriage. I could have been on drugs. Uh, I just, I think about all the possibilities of other lives. And I also think about, I also think about how beautiful the people around me were and how everybody, 
We looked different, we sounded different, but that didn't keep us from wanting to be around each other. But also, don't get me wrong, there were struggles too. You know, it's, you know, we're pitted against each other, Asians against uh, black and Latinos for resources. And then we put, get put into these spaces uh, where, um, you know, people le make less money and therefore we have to be in competition with e each other in order to get housing, to get jobs. So I am, those issues were there too. But when, but I live in Queens now in a residential area and I think like this is not who I am. <laughs> these people, there are these parents, these parents who are in PTA meetings and they like raise money and they like take their child to school every day and can afford to be there. And I think like, who has that time and who can do that? And I, you know, or they're mad that poor kids want to go to the good school and it just, that just infuriates me to think that, you know, you're going to deny a child a poor ch a child who doesn't have money an educational opportunity because they don't live in the area I mean so so I definitely have started to feel more and more uh, disassociated from places outside of outside of the Bronx and I also went to school in Harlem and I got both my uh, city college so I got both my degrees there and I and I taught there last semester and I just like that's my community you know like people of color urban also uh, international and uh, you know ethnic all ethnic backgrounds you know working class uh, multilingual yeah working adults you know I just it's like all the people that I don't see everywhere else that's who I want to teach <laughs>
Oh my God, I know. But you know, I, I'm, I'm scared for the Bronx in the way that it's becoming gentrified. Like, I think that's why, I lo what I loved is that it was like one of the last places in the, in the boroughs where I could go and still feel like, it feels like the New York I grew up in. Like Brooklyn's gone. And then, you know, the South Bronx, trying to rename it the Piano District and building all those things. It's like, I'm worried about my people being pushed out. So, you know, I have a, I have a real, like, a real love and kin uh, kinship for the Bronx and the people who inhabit, who make it alive, who make it beautiful. Yeah. Thank, you Thank you so much. Right, Thank great. you.